with us is two senior advocates of Nigeria, uh, Mr. Jibrin Okutepa and Dr. Paul Ananaba. So uh, you were just uh, finishing up your thought on, uh, on the release of these lists. Yes, yeah, the point I was making is that the, 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 the level of corruption in Nigeria is so amazing that the uh, anti-corruption agencies seems to be helpless in some ways. There are a lot of things that have worked and militated against effective and efficient investigation and prosecution <coughs> of crimes in this country. One, most if not all, the anti-corruption agencies are not owing their allegiance to the Federal Republic of Nigeria. They are owing allegiance to public officers who are temporary occupants of public offices. Ult so ultimately, I mean, this comes back to institution building. You know, I, I so we don't have strong institutions. Mm. And government itself is not ready to fund and build strong institutions. Because in other climes where you have strong institutions, you don't see government interference. They will do their investigations, and you may, it may interest you to hear that most of our political actors have one way or the other in interfering with what goes on in daily, I mean, in daily activities of these security operatives. You know, Mr. Okutepa, you know, some, some Nigerians listening to you earlier would probably, you know, some would certainly disagree with the notion that Nigerians have a DNA, for example, that is corrupt. Some people would say, well, look, even though both political parties have been involved in some manner with corruption, that it has to do with these weak institutions. Uh, how, how much of it has to do with our national orientation and how much of it is, is actually the lack of strong institutions? Let me give you an example why I said our DNA as at now. Just last month or thereabout, you hear a story of people who went to write jam. Somebody who is finding it, trying to go to university, was engaging in corrupt act to corrupt it, his, his, herself in getting Mark to university. If at this early age you are not ready to work, all you want to do is to get Mark at all costs. Even what you don't have, you want the people to know that you have. Because you cannot give that which you do not have. So from everywhere you go, on everywhere, go to politician's house. You see followership waiting in the house, wanting something from this political class. You don't know what this politician is earning. You don't know how. Indeed, in Nigeria, the way there you are, the more shift and sit you are given, mm -hmm. the more honor you are given either in the church or in the mosque or in public places. So people <coughs> no longer value honesty as the best policy. Okay. And the point I'm making is that our security operatives and our other institutions are also operating in this corrupt environment where people have access to them in a manner that they should not be investigated and if they are investigated and prosecuted in court, mm. they use all manner of delay antics S to sacred, delay proceedings. Sacred cow syndrome, essentially. In other words, mm. in this country, I can tell you that there are some sacred cows whose name you know are synonymous with corruption, and they are moving scot free on the street. Indeed, some of them are even constituting themselves into a demigod. D D Dr. Ananaba, I want to bring you in here because, you know, when we talk about the uh, anti corruption fight, uh, oftentimes, even when you look, uh, you know, you scrutinize these lists, whether they be PDP lists or APC lists or federal government lists, whatever you want to call them, uh, you are going to see most of it focused in on the pr public sector, uh, people stealing directly from the Treasury in one form or another. Uh, but a lot of times we know that taxpayers, unknowingly or knowingly right now, are paying billions, uh, even in, in dollars really, through AMCON, to people who stole billions of dollars from Nigerian banks and are not being prosecuted, are not going to jail. Do you think that there is too much of a focus right now on public sector corruption and not enough in the private sector? Yes, I agree that that, that, that appears to be the position. But let me, let me go back uh, to a bit of the foundation. From the part of the world where I'm from, uh, the next town to my city, I'm from Aba in Abia. 
So we, when we were growing up and up to now, we used to say that this is not the leg which, which, with which the cow will walk from about my And it's a proverb, but uh, it makes a lot of meaning. The leg with which uh, corruption is being fought now is not the leg with which it will walk from about my what do, what do I mean? The seriousness of corruption is heavier than the prosecution of corruption. And I thought that we need to review that. The, I, and each time I have said that, there is no clear link in our fight for corruption between uh, uh, investigation and prosecution. We need to review that. There has to be, there has to be some determination to prosecute corruption or to fight corruption. And I'll give you an example. There should be teams, well-trained. The team will be involved, involved in investigation. The same team in the investigation knows what they're investigating because they know what they're going to use to 